Hello. In this lecture, I'll be looking at Nikolai Gogol, or in Ukrainian, Hoho. Uh, Gogol is, or Hoho, is perhaps uh, one of my all-time favorite authors. Uh, I, I think one of the reasons why he initially would have, would have appealed to me was because I was a fan of sitcom, particularly sitcoms such as Seinfeld and that kind of thing. And if you come to Gogol from a perspective of um, modern American sitcoms, you can see where that sitcom humour originated from. Uh, that these oh, earlier authors, particularly such as Gogo or Hoho, uh, were drawing on a similar comedic tradition as the modern sitcom writers. Uh, and as you could almost argue that modern sitcoms uh, wouldn't be possible uh, without this kind of uh, literary heritage, particularly in, in, in the Russian context. Uh, uh, so, anyway, uh, what differentiates Hoho's work from the modern sitcoms, however, is a particular depth. While it has all the comedic elements of a modern sitcom, a sitcom uh, it's amazingly humorous at times. Uh, the scenes in some of his his uh, his short stories are amazingly humorous. Uh, say in Christmas, his story of Christmas Eve, where the uh, overweight or obese Cossack is so lazy that he can't bend. He, uh, he he won't even use utensils to eat a bowl of dumplings. He just kind of props the dumplings up on a barrel and kind of leans forward and slurps them into his mouth. This kind of absurd, humorous image, images are, are, are full of, um, well, a characteristic of Gogol's work. The, um, and not not to mention the the uh, the scene the scene in uh, Christmas Eve when uh, all the shooters of uh, a a a witch effectively, <laughs> and and end up um, being tossed into uh, giant. Uh, giant giant coal bags of coal one after another I mean so Gogol is initially his stories the first layer of them is intensely humorous but the more you get into them particu particularly the story of the overcoat you realize that the, the, the humor is just this it's, it's kind of a way of easing you into something that's a lot more tragic and I think this is one of the uh, there's a saying that when we read Gogol, we read him, we, we, we cry through our laughter. So uh, uh, we're laughing, but then eventually there comes a point where there's kind of a, a switch. It happens quite suddenly all of a sudden, and then you realize that it, this is no longer a comedy. This is actually a tragedy. So there, there is that complex layering and interplay. Uh, between comedy and tragedy, almost breaking down what we traditionally think is it ought to be a comedy and what ought to be a tragedy. Um, and effectively in this story, The Overcoat, I think he reaches the heights of tragedy in, in this particular short story. Um, and one of the interesting things about this story, the, uh, the Overcoat, is that the protagonist is not a traditional sort of glorious hero type, it's not a man on an adventure. Well, in in a, a heroic venture, at least, really, it's a non-entity. The main character, Akaki, uh, the name sort of uh, has all sorts of embarrassing con connotations for 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 people familiar with European languages. Is a is a little man, uh, a nobody, a a superfluous man, and we see in Gogol in creating this this little man, this nobody, little bureaucrat. As someone so low in a bureaucratic chain that he's he's effectively just a scribe. He's a copier, um, the the lowest the lowest rung on on the administrative ladder, uh, and effectively Gogol here is 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 part of a, a a movement which focuses the narrative not upon great heroic uh, protagonists but rather superfluous men men without purposes. Men without qualities, like uh, you can see that later coming through in in in, in Lermontov's uh, book, A Hero of Our Time, as well as Thomas Musil's uh, A Man Without Qualities, 
through Swan's Way, which we also look at in this course, and as well as Kafka's Metamorphosis. Um, so this uh, this this superfluous uh, man, man, um, uh, an individual without without much meaning, without much purpose, without much sense in it, like a lost soul, you would say, uh, uh, becomes the, 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 the focal point of, of, of the narration. Um, I mean, e even in, in Gogol's sort of epic Taras Bulba, the, uh, the, uh, his, his epic Cossack Tao, I mean, if, if you watch the movie version of it, particularly the Russian one, uh, Taras is presented as, presented as a, 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 a very heroic, sort of idealized Cossack type. But when you read the book, you realize that, well, this is a very flawed individual, not an individual you like to emulate, probably not an individual you like to be in contact with. Um, so that, uh, so in that sense, they're the main characters of, of Gogol's work. They, they, they are very flawed individuals. They, they're individuals with a lot of personality issues, psychological problems. Um, and we can see see the uh, Akaki, uh, the, the main character of uh, uh, the, o the Overcoat, similar to uh, the main character of Dostoevsky's The Underground Man, who is also a, a kind of little bureaucrat, perhaps slightly high up the food chain, also uh, someone w without any real positive uh, qualities. Um, another low entity type. So this type of person comes to the fore in, in literature around this time, particularly in a Russian context. Uh, 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 it's almost a rebellion of the traditional focusing of, of a plot around a, 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 a glorious or noble hero type, um, which I find so so fascinating. And, and in a sense, there's, a, something, there's often something heroic, or at least uh, element of pathos coming out in the in the non-heroic journey, the the pathological journey, the perverted journey of this little man in their everyday life. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of it's in this way. I think it speaks to to modern audiences because, in a sense, in the modern world, we are all little people. There is not a lot of room, except for in the domain of crass celebrity. There's not a lot of room for 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 glorious heroic individualism um, within large workplace organizations, within mass societies, li large nation states, the individual is, is reduced to, to, to such a small entity that there's an element of ourselves that, that we recognize in these, these uh, little men characters, these Gogol type. Uh, 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 superfluous characters. Um, I think another thing about uh, the way Gogol or Hoho ca creates his character of Akaki, the, he, he really captures the finer points of humiliation in, 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 in a way that's, it's, I mean, it's quite outstanding, really. Uh, I mean, not to mention the name Akaki, uh, Akaki and all its connotations, the, the, uh, his surname being affected with the name for a shoe, so he's, he's, he's not of noble sort of um, stock. The fact that when he walks down the street, he's in his own sort of little world. That when, you know, uh, women are throwing their rubbish out from the high stories, uh, the rubbish lands on his hat, and he doesn't even notice. And throughout the day, he's got little bits of, you know, food peel hanging off his hat throughout the day that he doesn't notice. His, uh, the, when he comes to work, he enters the, the bureau and even a janitor doesn't even acknowledge him. So that's how lowly he is when, 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 the, when the janitors effectively don't even bother to, to pay, pay heed to his, his entrance. Uh, the tailor's wife doesn't notice when he enters the, the house as well. She, it's just, he just kind of, he's almost a ghostly like figure in life. He just sort of, um, and that's a strange thing when he becomes a ghost at the end, he's... Uh, I mean, he's more of a ghost when he's living than, 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 than once he's died at the end and becomes a, a, a ghost in the story. Uh, also, his jacket is referred to as a bedrobe. It, it's that worn and, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of a, 
and and the imper- important personage who 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 re- refers to him, him as a as being a lad, not realizing he's close to fifty. All these aspects of humiliation, the kind of uh, the the fact that people assume people of low status to often be young of age, even if they're quite 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 old. Um, so that, that these sort of little observations and all these observations about the uh, person of important personage uh, that are, uh, and on all the kind of um, things that go around creating a sense of importance uh, for an individual, I think that's also worthy of paying attention. I mean, Akaki, for instance, he's a he's an anxiety anxiety-ridden sort of man-boy in a sense. He's a noble personality. He's the basis of, of, of what people often refer to as a schlamozel. He's a classic, sh- he's a schlamozel par excellence. Anything that, that can go wrong will go wrong to, for this individual. He has no luck. He's resigned to his fate. He's, he's in his place. He's, he, he's too an- angst-ridden to try and move out of it in any way whatsoever. So he's quite, quite happy right there in his in his little do- domain uh, accepting that terrible things would happen to him and you almost get a sense that uh, a forethought that you know that something terrible is going to happen to this 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 jacket that he eventually purchases uh, or has made so he is this disagreeable character however nonetheless when he is succumb- when he does succumb to illness and and is in the process of dying we do feel an immense pathos for him, an immense sense of uh, grief and loss. It all, it's almost out of keeping with the kind of tale that this story is. You don't expect to be moved by the, the downfall of poor Akaki in, in, uh, in this story in, in the way that you do. Uh, I, I, I think though the way Hoho can move the reader unexpectedly in a tale that is to be honest quite silly and has a quite a silly main character i think that there is that's part of his genius that he's able to do that that he's able to uh uh that the higher levels of tragedy and pathos almost ruptured through a story that's essentially a, at one level a, a a a story for mass consumption entertainment almost so he's writing in the in the genre that's almost a, a, not attempting to be the most serious literary genre, but then what he what he does with it uh, is of the most serious and profound uh, kind of literary achievement, which I find. Uh, the final thing I'd like to talk about is uh, uh, the use of magic realism in his work. Uh, and you find this throughout his work, well, in, in many of his works, also Christmas Eve as well, this, uh, um, the interplay between realism and, the, and, and magic, that breaking down of realism and, and magic. Um, so uh, I'll leave that for the next video, and uh, we'll continue the discussion in that one, okay, on magic realism.